Bruce Campbell, it is so exciting to have you here today. And can I say you are impeccably dressed. You look so good right now. Sir, this is Comic-Con, okay? This is Comic-Con. Do I need to say that again? No. Nope. This is the mother of all Comic-Cons. Would you dress... Would you dress poorly in front of your mother? I, apparently, I feel very underdressed right now. So I know, I know. I don't know why. I Fans look. show up for photo ops with Crocs and basketball shirts. And I'm like, that's going above the mantle? <laughs> you know? Is that the Christmas card? Especially with how much they paid, I'm sure. You, but, I, you know, yeah. actors, guests at these conventions, they are guilty as well. Yeah. Actors love to show up in their crinkly blue jeans with the slits in the blue jeans with a rumpled up t-shirt and their hair sticking straight up. And they that's like the cool laid back actor look. Yeah. I'm like, could you put a jacket on? I can get some pants without the cuts. You yeah. Know? You're gonna look back at that. this one day and, yeah. and just regret it. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna look back and go, Nope. But a blazer never goes. And you're out of stuck style. with it. A blazer's timeless. Yep. That's true. Anyway. Now, uh, curious, this is just for my own personal interest, but did you watch Deadpool and Wolverine yet? Because I was waiting for Pizza Papa to show up. Um, he's not in that timeline. Mm. He's in a different timeline. I saw that. I mean, it's very Doesn't clear. mean I wasn't still disappointed. Well, here's what I say to Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman. Uh, get a room. <laughs> What's with the bromance? We get it. Thank you. Next, go back to your soccer team. Ryan. Now, have you seen the pizza, or the, not the pizza, uh, the popcorn buckets that have been taken off? Have you noticed those? What are those? Well, I've, I have one right here for you. This is from uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, and it's a, it's a, it's a popcorn bucket that they've uh, been selling a lot of. I don't know if you want to you put your hand in there. Why did they do that? Uh, money, I think. This is an actual piece of merchandise? It's a merchandise, yeah. I don't like it. You fill that with popcorn, no. uh, uh, and and uh, and you just put your hand inside. No, that's... no, because Ryan Reynolds would think it's funny that you're shoving your fist into Hugh Jackman's face. <laughs> so that's the joke. Hopefully, it's your fist. Um, it, I can't, it, I'm not going to comment on that. Anything either. could be put in there, really. This is wrong, AMC. <laughs> nice try, nice try. Let's send that one back. Now, your Evil Dead movies came out before the recent popcorn bucket craze, but what would an Ash Evil Dead popcorn bucket maybe look like? You'd have no hand to get the popcorn. <laughs> so you'd have to shake it into your mouth with one hand. Yeah. 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 No, that makes it's pretty total logical. sense. Yeah. yeah. Now, you're going to be appearing in Hysteria next on Peacock. Can yes. you tell me a little bit about it and what fans can maybe expect without spoiling too much? Yes, because I'll get yelled at if That's... I say too much. But I'll say just the right amount. It's a cool horror, horror with a twist, mm -hmm. meaning it's pretty interesting psychological horror as well as demonic slash satanic horror. So something new for you. It's a small town in rural Michigan, my home state, Oh, uh, set in the late 80s, and I play uh, the chief of police, mm -hmm. Chief Dandridge. And what I like about it, the, the words are what got me. Mm -hmm. These days, if someone says, hey, Bruce, Here's a new horror show you could be part of. I'm like, okay, let's see how good the words are. Because it could be a piece of El Crapo. So the words were very good. They created a very rich character and a rich environment in this town. And so it's great to see a small town that this, if this happened in a big city, no, no one would care. Mm -hmm. But this is a small town. These people are not ready for this. And they don't know where it's going to go. And the audience will not know where it's going to go or how it's going to end or how bad it's going to get because you don't even know if this shit is real or not. So this is my favorite kind of horror where you go, did I just see that? Because they'll do stuff in the show. You go, what was that? And then they'll cut to another scene. So it's a cool show and I couldn't even get myself in trouble by telling you too much, because I don't even know <laughs> the twists and turns. No, well, that was masterfully vague. Like I wasn't it. Yeah, it, that was so well done, yeah. and I want to see the show, but I know nothing about it. That's right. I, yeah, but what's um, I like the setting because mm -hmm. what's also cool is nobody's texting. This is like '88. Mm -hmm. You're picking up the phone. 
You make phone calls. If nobody's there, it just keeps ringing. <laughs> you, you can't even leave a message in 88. Uh, and if they're on the phone, you're not getting through. Busy signal. There's no, there's no call waiting. Yep. Not in the 80s. Then were the days. There's ashtrays on tables. There's uh, pencils and pens and pieces of paper. In the police station, it's all just paper and telephones. Well, on the subject of hysteria, yeah. uh, considering you're the Bruce Campbell, what's the most hysterical fan interaction you've ever experienced? It is weird to see people. They'll come back later in a show with the bleeding tattoo. Mm -hmm. Like I've signed, I think my record is I've signed eight appendages at cons. And, they all, and there was a tattoo artist at a parlor at the con, mm -hmm. which is kind of brilliant. And they had the signature tattooed onto their flesh. Is that flattering for you? Or My dad was an ad guy for 30 years, and he said, son, this is like walking billboards, a tattoo. Yeah. Uh, I had a guy come up at a book signing, and he threw a picture down, and it was the poster of Army of Darkness in full Technicolor, but mm -hmm. it looked weird. And I go, why does this photo look weird? I know what the poster looks like. This is weird. He goes, well, because it's a tattoo on my back. I said, you're full of crap. He goes, want to see? So he was right in front of a long line. I said, get it off. So he whipped his shirt off. His entire back was the poster of Army of Darkness. And I'm talking ink, like dark. How long ago was that? Oh, I don't know, 10 years ago. Okay. We turned him around. I paraded him up and down. That guy, they cheered this guy. How much longer do you think it's going to look like the Army of Darkness poster? No, he's dead now. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, the, he, the toxins bled into his system, and he never, uh, his, his lymph nodes never recovered. Now, I don't want to get too political, but have you seen the memes yet of Matt Gates looking uncannily like the Surgeon General? The Surgeon General of Beverly Hills. Yep. There's no denying it, sir. <laughs> you don't have to be in any one particular party to go, huh, hmm, hmm. maybe just a little... Now, granted, that was Rick Baker doing five hours of makeup on me. Yeah. I, I, I don't know how many hours uh, uh, that representative had. Probably a little bit more. Recovery time, at One least. One can't say, <laughs> sir. <laughs> um, last question. For all the movies that you've done, is there anything that never got a sequel that you thought was going to get a sequel or you were just surprised didn't get a sequel? It's more TV shows. Mm -hmm. I want to bring back Burn Notice. It's time. There's a, bunch of, there's a bunch of perps in the world, international perps that mm -hmm. are scumbags all around the world that still have to be dealt with. None of our cast is dead, either in real life yeah. or their characters. So you do a two-hour movie. I'm trying to lobby for these. They did it with Monk. Mm -hmm. Came back with little two-hour movies. Yeah, yeah. People want a little taste of it. They're, they're ready for a taste of, That's of right. Burn Notice. The resurgence of Burn Notice. Just as soon as they binge all of Hysteria, which is going to happen later this year. And I hear that it's fantastic. Well. And terrifying. I know some reasons why things are happening. Because I know how well it tested with audiences. Mm -hmm. And I'm actually not kidding in this interview. Um, they have great confidence in this show. Because uh, they did a really good job. And these shows come and go. Mm -hmm. But every so often, one of them sticks, and I think this one's going to stick because I can tell by the way executives behave. Mm -hmm. And if your show isn't like really knocking it, and if it doesn't test well, it's kind of like you were never born. Mm -hmm. And if it tests well, well, hey, man, how's it going? It's great to see you. <laughs> how's everything? How's everything? Hey, thanks. <laughs> was, was, see, that's what you want. You yeah. want a grabby executive. Yeah. You want a handsy the grabby executive. executive. Then you know you're doing your job well. Yeah, the hand behind the neck works too. Like yeah. with guys, you yeah. know, like, oh, man. Oh, God. God, I Is, love this show. You love this right. interview, right? Is that how you're? That's how you know. Yeah, that's yeah. right. I feel God, so good. Great interview. Man. Thanks, Bruce. Great this is amazing. Have fun at San Diego Comic Con. God, you guys check out Hysteria. Man, yeah. Yeah.